Hi, good afternoon everyone. This is Rajiv Eskhana from immigration.com, the law offices of Rajiv Eskhana PC. This is our Thursday community conference. One Thursday we hold it here at our community bridge and another Thursday we hold it at LinkedIn, LinkedIn Audio. That said, today is April 25th and I will first deal as usual with the questions I have marked as frequently asked questions amongst the posted questions. Okay, I will be inviting people to ask follow up each time I answer the question. Uh, note that I will close the conference in just a few more minutes because we will have so many people that we won't be able to um, deal with everybody's issues unless we close the conference. I already have enough people logged in actually. But I'll wait another five minutes. Um, so let's get started. I will start with the questions that I have marked as frequently asked questions. This call is being recorded as you have heard when you entered and we'll post it to our various social media including uh, on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, whatever they are calling it this week, um, YouTube channels. So you can fo follow us on our social media from uh, our homepage which is immigration.com. Okay. That said, let me begin with the first question that I noticed um, as frequently asked questions. This is H-1B lottery layoff before start, automatic status change. So let's me, let me begin with the first part of the question. What if I get laid off before the H-1B begins on October 1st? A lot of confusion in this area. I can tell you what is reasonably safe, what is perfectly safe and what is not safe at all. So perfectly safe is when you actually start working for the company who sponsored your H-1B and work with them for a few pay periods, one, two, three, four, whatever you can, the more the better, at least two or three. And then you transfer your H-1B. I think that's a very safe situation. What is less safe? What if I get approved, but I'm not able to join the employer for whatever reason, but my H-1B is not revoked before October 1st, okay? Now, this is less safe, but this could still work. So, what is the first situation? October 1st came, I joined the sponsoring employer, I worked for them. After a few pay periods, I transferred. Second situation. I was not able to join, but my H-1B was not revoked before October 1st. This can also work. But if my H-1B is revoked before October 1st, I'm dead in the water. I've got nothing I can take forward from there. Um, if the government has not noticed that I, I my H-1B was revoked before October 1st, which is very unlikely, I may be okay. But that's not something you can depend upon. So that is the grade of safety in lottery H-1B approvals and transfer of H-1B. Another question was, part of the question was automatic status change. So the question was, I get my H-1B approval. We are in August and I was on F-1. On October 1st, does my status change automatically to H-1B? The answer is yes. If you've asked for status change, and you've done nothing to violate your status, you should be automatically changed to H-1B come October 1st. And traveling. Now, let me look at the question. What happens if the company lays off after June but before October? I covered that. Would I have H-1B with 60-day timeline to find the next job? You do not. You do not. But you would have the 60 days if you're on F-1. You would have those 60 days because of the F1, not because of the H1B. Different situation. Does the status automatically change to H1B? Yes, I already answered that. Uh, does immigration require pay stubs for a couple of weeks to prove our employment? That's a different question. Change of status is a different question. Change of employers is a different question. I already covered that. If I file petition for two companies separately, how will immigration decide which one to approve? Will they approve both? So if two companies applied for your lottery who are unrelated and they also applied for your H-1B, 
government will approve both H-1Bs and you can choose whichever one you want to go to. Any travel restrictions from June to September? Yes, there are. What I want you to do is go to our website, immigration.com. In the search engine, web search, engine, our own search, uh, we have solar installed. Just click on uh, search and then just type the word travel. Uh, hit search. There's a faceted search. So it tells you, do you want to look for the word travel in my blogs or in the articles or in the news items, just click on blog. The very first article is about how to travel, when to travel, um, when your H1B is going on, uh, what to do if you are still on OPT, what if you are STEM OPT pending. All these situations are covered. I did that back in 2021. It's still good law. Okay. Now, let me lock the conference, guys. We have a lot many more people than I can handle. I just want to make sure I cover everybody. The conference is now locked. Okay. So we've locked the conference. Um, now, uh, please ask me only follow-up questions on what I discussed. No new questions. Hold your new questions to the end. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do my very best to answer everybody's questions who is here. As long as, if you please try to make it short. Okay. That said, um, any follow-up questions on all these issues I discussed about H-1B, change of status, layoff, multiple filings, traveling, etc. Press star 5 on your phone. Any follow-up questions? Press star 5. No follow-ups. Next question. This is not the important one. Now, he didn't ask me or she didn't ask me all these questions, but I thought of all the questions that could possibly go into this uh, particular box and I tried to address them all. Okay, one second, let me grab a sip of water. So, what about this National Interest Waiver Green Card? Let's say I'm working with IBM and I got my National Interest Waiver and I moved to Oracle Will I have to do National Interest Waiver again? <clears throat> so this is where things get interesting. And I tell people there is a sweet spot between relying too much upon a particular job for your NIW and relying not at all upon the job. Okay, so for example, if I'm working for IBM and I'm work, work, working on Watson X technology, okay, I'm creating this great software in the back end. If I say in my NIW that... Uh, my future endeavor, my uh, continued work for the US will be, I'll be developing IBM's AI. Now I have just married myself to IBM. At least that is potentially the problem. On the other hand, if I say that I'll work in the field of AI, working on enterprise technologies and you know implementing them in enterprise environment, then if I move to Oracle and continue the same type of job, I think my NIW is safe. But also remember, if you have to refile, you have to refile. You still carry your priority date from the old NIW. <clears throat> so this is just something to keep in mind. Now, this gentleman um, or lady, Vaibhav, so it's a gentleman, um, started NIW, uh, but it was self-petition, not the company, self-petition while working with employer A. Oh, but then I couldn't file the petition. So you never filed. Okay, got it. Then you got laid off. Now I'm working with employer B. Um, is that red flag because you got laid off? No. Why would that be a red flag? I don't see. No, I don't think so. It's only been one month with employer B. Shall I wait? See, remember, I don't want you to tie your NIW to a particular company. It should be more generic than that. But it should still have enough meat on the bones um, or, I don't know, enough curry on the potatoes if you're a vegetarian, so that it should be approvable. It shouldn't be so vague that nobody can even know what you're trying to do. Somewhere in between, okay? So that is the way it works. There's no particular cool-down period just because you joined an employer um, recently and you have to wait a certain number of months. You do not, okay? Press star 5 if you have a follow-up question on this. Press star 5, please. Okay, no follow-up question. Let me see if I have other frequently. Oh, yeah. This is another one. What is CAP CAPEX? Oh, hold on. There is a question from someone. 
Guys, be a little quicker, okay? I have to see where are you calling from? Where are you? 857. Area code 857, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts, go ahead. I can hear you. Hi, Rajuji. Um, thank you for answering my question. Mm -hmm. So, I have approved NAW, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm an Indian national. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, currently I'm in a transition to change my job, mm -hmm. um, right? So, I still have, uh, I'm, I'm still on H1B visa. I need to transfer my H1, right? Mm -hmm. Can I work? And I, I, I don't know if my, uh, considering the current scenario, I don't know if uh, I would be working with my new employer for a longer period of time. So if I transfer my H1B to a new employer, uh, employer B, can I also work with employer A uh, for three to four weeks until I know my uh, new uh, job will be uh, saturated? Okay, so hold on one second. This has nothing to do with NIW. So, uh, but your question is totally about H1B. However, uh, you've kind of hooked it in there. I'll answer your question. Please be careful, guys. Ask me questions that are directly related to what we are talking about. So, nobody can work on a two H-1Bs at the same time for two different employers unless the H-1Bs are filed as concurrent H-1B or more accurately, unless the second H-1B is filed as a concurrent to the first H-1B. Okay? Nobody can do that. Oh. However, Okay. Just because one H-1B is approved does not mean the previous H-1B is cancelled. So let's say I'm working for IBM. My H-1B, I don't know why I always say IBM, but it's just easier to say that. Plus I was fooling around with their Watson X platform. Okay, so when I'm working for IBM on their H-1B and Oracle got my approval, doesn't mean IBM's H-1B is cancelled. I can still finish my job at IBM and then join Oracle in four, five, six, seven weeks. No problem with that. What I cannot do is hold both jobs at the same time. Make sense? Yes, but what if uh, I work at the Google? So IBM and Google, right? My new job is Google and they laid me off after three weeks. Can I again start working at IBM without transfer? Or the answer is the answer is the answer is yes, as long as the job remains the same and as long as IBM had not revoked your H one B. Okay. Okay. This is actually now in the regulations. This used okay. to be doubtful, but this is now in the regulations. Okay. Okay. Good Thank luck. You. Okay. Yeah, Google should do better with their. Artificial intelligence absolutely sucks. Layoff during self and I don't know. Okay, we've done this already. Uh, let's go on to the next frequently asked question. How, what is cap gap extension? So, this is how it works. This is kind of complicated and I hope I remember all the rules. Um, double check everything that I'm saying always anyway because I could be mixing things up. It can happen. doesn't happen... <laughs> frequently, but it could happen. Always double check. So, cap cap extension is the name given to the ability to work while your OPT has expired and your H1B is pending. That means, first of all, you have OPT or STEM OPT <clears throat> and your H1B was in the lottery and you filed the H1B petition. Now, some of the rules that are important, on the date you filed your H-1B, if you want the authorization to work, on the date you filed your H-1B, your previous OPT, STEM OPT must still have been valid. So let's say my STEM OPT is expiring on April 20th and my employer filed my H-1B on April 15th. I'm entitled to continue working till September 30th or till my H-1B is denied if it is denied. If it is approved, I can continue working till September 30th. Automatically, I become uh, H-1B on October 1st. So, cap gap covers the gap between when your OPT expires and H-1B kicks in. 
However, you do not get cap gap if you have applied for consular processing. If you say, I want to get my H-1B from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh or uh, England, anywhere, UK, anywhere, you, you, anywhere outside, you don't get cap gap. So it has to be a change of status. Another thing is, what if my H-1B, my, uh, sorry, my STEM OPT is expiring before April 1st? You don't get cap gap. However, if you file your H-1B within 60 days of your OPT expiration, as long as those 60 days, at least some part of it falls on or after April 1st, you can continue to stay in the United States. So, if you file within the 60-day grace period, you can continue to stay in the U.S. until September 30th, October 1st. You're on H-1B, but you don't get to work. So, keep that in mind. That's how cap gap works. I hope that's not too complicated. I hope I, I was able to explain that. So, the question that I was asked was, um, I was selected in the lottery. My STEM OPT expires April 30th. Uh, like to extend my... Uh, can you explain the details of the program? So you've got to get your H-1B filed on or before April, well, no, on, before April 30th. If you do, you can automatically continue working till September 30th or till your H-1B is denied, if it is denied. Do you need any special permission from the school? No, this is automatic. But if the employer says, look, we want proof of your ability to work, you can ask the school to issue you a cap gap I-20. They can do that. Star 5. If you have a follow-up question, press star 5 on your phone, please. All right. There are two follow-up questions on this. Uh, that's a popular topic. Mm, let's see. Area code 669. 669. Go ahead, please. Area code 669. Yeah. Hi, hi Rajuji. So, uh, my question is like, you know, uh, I have filed my petition before uh, EAD ended. Ji. And I also requested DSO for cap gap. Mm -hmm. But they are saying like uh, SCVP cannot approve my request because uh, I, I didn't get receipt notice yet. And I tried like multiple times with DSO okay. to do like, you know, to get approval. But they, every time like, they are saying like we contacted SCVP and they are denying the request. Yeah. Cap -gap. Yeah. I don't it think. It's not automatically updated yeah. in the portal. What you can do is just contact the SEVIP yourself. Okay. Contact SEVIP yourself and ask them what is the status of your file. They'll be able to assist you. Okay. If indeed, uh, and I I don't think your DSO would have any reason to lie, but it doesn't hurt to check yourself also. Um, typically, the way I understand the process to work, when you file with a change of status request and the system uh, USCIS system registers your file and the database for service gets automatically updated. It's not the receipt uh, as in issuance of the paper receipt. I think it's the physical receipt when they physically receive the information, your filing. So double check with the SEVIP and if it's taking long for the government to enter the data, it doesn't hurt to have your lawyers uh, call the USCIS customer service also. Okay. But you can continue working because, yeah, because because your petition was filed on time. Uh, yeah, because my employer is also not willing to uh, let me work because of these issues. So, don't so issues. what you what you can do what you can do is um, check with your lawyers and have them give you a copy of that page or that particular provision that says people can automatically continue working. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Area code 573. 573, go ahead. You have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, so, current status uh, is F1 mm -hmm. and have gotten a job with an exempt H1 employer. Mm -hmm. um, but the question is, should I file for OPT uh, as I have a 10-day gap between the 30-day grace period and the start of employment? But the H-1B application has already been filed. Okay. So, let me understand this. You file the application within the 60-day grace period after your uh, F-1 ends, your activity ends. But you still don't have the OPT, the first-year OPT, right? Yes. 
You have to apply because otherwise you won't be able to work till September 30th. I see. Okay. Okay. I don't think you'll be covered okay. by, I don't think, hang on. Mm -hmm. You won't be covered by um, cap gap, but you'll be covered by your OPT. So apply for your OPT premium processing. Okay. Understood. Okay. Great. Good, good luck. Okay. There's another question from area code 267. Uh, 267, no new questions, only follow-ups, please. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, I just have, I mean, I'm not sure if you're talking about the same thing, but my question here was, like, my my 10 EAD expires on Jan 22nd. Can I still use the gap, gap to file for H1B in March? No. Um, because, you see... You cannot file H-1Bs before April 1st. Never. Okay. So anybody okay. whose OPT ends um, before April 1st, they will never have cap cap. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, cap cap is kind of uh, weird a little bit. Let's see, are there any other frequently asked questions? I'm going over them. No, there aren't. So let's go back to the first question that was posted. So this was not, um, this is not um, frequently asked. I'm currently on STEM OPT with company A. Companies A and B applied for my H-1B and it got picked. Can I ask employer B to file my H-1B and join company B from October if they are okay with it? While working for company A till September on STEM OPT? Sure, absolutely. If I'm on medical leave, does it affect H-1B transfer process? No. Uh, if you have medical leave and proof of the medical leave, that's status enough. You don't need pay stubs for that. Okay. Star 5, if you have a follow-up question on this, press star 5. All right. This is area code 513. 513, go ahead. I can hear you. Area code 513. Ohio. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hello, hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Rajiv. So, uh, I'm currently on my OPT. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So, to, uh, my current employer has filed for H1, uh, is willing to file for H1, which is a non-CAP uh, exempt. It is a cap exempt, and there is a future employer, uh, which is a staffing company, who has filed for this year H1 lottery, and it got selected. So, in order to not to miss out this uh, H1, how do I mitigate the situation? Okay, so your question is two employers are willing to file. One is through lottery, the other one is quota exempt. Right. Yeah, you can file both. I don't see any problem. Uh, so, how do I like? Uh, is it a concurrent H one or? How no, these can be these can be separate H one Bs. The only tricky part is, um, should you be converting from F one to H one B or H one B to H one B in the second case? Don't worry about all those details. Let your lawyers figure it out. But I think both companies should know that you are applying. If they don't, there'll be a problem. And if you can't tell them, I would say select one and go with them. Okay. Okay. Because, because if it, one is an uh, cap exam. It doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. What I told you still goes. Okay. 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 Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Medical leave ho gaya. Let's see. Then we have the next question. We did this NIW. L2 work authorization and travel during pending L1A. My spouse's L1A is in process. His visa is extension is filed, non-premium. In case the our I-94 is... You know what? I haven't looked at the L2 automatic extension. I can't tell you the answer. Um you may have automatic extension of X hundred days to continue working, but I don't remember exactly how much that is. There are three different provisions that apply to L2s, and I don't know the answer off the top of my head. 
I think you should be able to continue working. Please double check. You can go to the, you can just Google um, USCIS automatic EAD extension. They should tell you how L2s work. Um, we also have to travel to Canada uh, if the extension is approved before travel. Can we go to Canada without our visa stamp with the approved? Yeah, yeah, under AVR, absolutely. Is this rule valid for any kind of travel, air or land? Yes. Limit of number of days? Uh, I think it's 30 days or less. Either it's less than 30 or 30 days or less. One of the two. I think it's 30 days or less. Okay, but you can Google it. All right, star five. Uh, should you do it on the premium? I don't know about that. That depends. Let's see, area code 720. Uh, 720, please go ahead. Hi, Radhif, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, for the L1A extension, my question is, like I spoke with my company, and they said that uh, I'm not allowed to work after June 1st mm -hmm. if my I-94 is expiring. Mm -hmm. Because now for L2, only the I-94 is the applicable document, right? Because it is with L2S status. So we don't need a separate EAD card for being mm -hmm. eligible to work. Correct. So that I-94 works as the EAD. Correct. So uh, I traveled to India last year mm -hmm. and uh, my husband did not travel with me. Mm -hmm. So his visa is already expired, but mm -hmm. I have my visa stamping until 2026. Okay. So under this case, so my I-94 is valid until June 1st this year. This okay, the it's the, it's the, it's, it, ma'am, it's the I-94 that matters, not the visa. Uh, yeah, exactly. So in this case, if I want my I-94 to get extended, uh, so can I, like my husband has converted his uh, uh, application, petition approval into premium processing now. So we will be getting the result in around two weeks. So after that, can I take his approved petition and my I-539 receipt notice? And can I uh, cross the border, like go to Mexico, CBP, uh, you know, San Diego border for the I-97 extension and come back to get my I-94 extended? Okay. So I'm not quite sure I understand what your question is. What you're asking me is, can I extend my L2 based upon my husband's L1 extension through a visa stamping? Yes. Through a visa stamping? Not through the visa stamping. But With his I-797 approval notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so hold on, hold on. I Hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am. This you're making it a little bit more complicated than it has to be. Let's just focus the questions, okay? Okay. Currently, you have a visa stamp, right? On okay. your passport, that is still valid and continues to be valid till 25, correct? Yes. Okay. So you yes. can actually take his. Uh, let me think about this. That's an interesting question. I think you should be able, to the best of my knowledge, you can double check with CBP. They actually answer questions. You should be able to use. Okay. His. Do you need an L2 approval? Very interesting. Give me give me a second to collect my thoughts. Can I enter USA with his visa extension and uh, his status extension and my visa? I think you can, ma'am. I think you can. But please double okay. check with the CBP because I've never encountered this situation before. I think it is possible because you have your visa stamp valid all the way till 2025. Mm. So you can use that. Now, you also have proof that yeah. his uh, L1 has been extended X number of years. So, you are at least entitled to yeah. X number of years of L2. Okay, as long as the L2, uh, yeah. you know, as long as it's approved. So, to the best of my calculations, you should be able to get the L2 uh, with just stepping out and coming back in. Okay? Okay. Okay. Anything yeah. else? Okay. And, and there is, a, on the second question for the AVR, I uh, have another question. Mm -hmm. So my husband's uh, visa was converted to L1A from L1B mm -hmm. after the uh, three years. That shouldn't matter, ma'am. So now... Yeah, that shouldn't matter for the AVR. That, that shouldn't matter? No. 
Okay, okay. No because problem. the AVR rule specifically mentioned the F visas, you know. No, no. Uh, AVR applies, applies to, US it applies to all non-immigrant yes. visas. Almost all. I mean, as far as okay. I remember. L for sure. All right. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Bye-bye. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next question. Let's see. Prashant. Data scientist, yeah, this is a troublesome um, category for H-1Bs. Uh, I have two questions. I have, I know about O-1, G-C, N-I-W, Day-1, C-P-T. I'm a government contractor. Um, I'm working for a government contractor, private company as a data scientist. I have only one publication and don't have work experience more than three years. Uh, can you suggest a suitable option other than day one CPT? No, nope, there isn't one. You mentioned in one call with UD that data scientist is also a doubt. Any specific reasons? See, because data scientist, data analyst, these positions, it's very difficult to pin down what degree is required for this. So I always look for what is the underlying characteristics of the job. Uh, is this job more like a, a statistician? where you're doing a lot of uh, patterns or is it more mathematical oriented where you're doing a lot of calculations and formulas or is it uh, you are developing for example streams data streams automation that's more like a software developer so it depends um, there are so many different ways to approach it um, but for uh, h1b the job must require uh, either a specific degree or closely related degrees. So that's where the problem is. Star 5, if you have a follow-up question, press star 5. Area code 551. 551, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, Rajiji. So you, so when we are registering for H1B03, we are giving the job description, right? Right. So do, you, do you mean that the Job description should be aligned with uh, my experience and whatever my duties. As no, 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 no. No, that that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is your job description must be truthfully presented. You don't have a choice there, uh, but it should be carefully considered. What do you look more like? Do you look more like a statistician, a mathematician, or a programmer, or a coder, or a developer? So all these things should be considered. Got it. Okay. Is there any way to find uh, specific, or do you do you have any sources, government sources, or anything like that, where I can find what should be the perfect title according to no. the duties? I'm no, no, absolutely not. Don't even think about it. Um, that takes years of years and years of um, um, work. Uh, get together with your lawyers. Got this it. is partly an issue of law and partly an issue of technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Good luck. Okay. Next question. Arena Paul. H-1B expiring, unused visa, visa and potential renewal applying for B-1B2 as a tourist. I have a stamped H-1B till November, till September 24. I can't move to the U.S. Mother got diagnosed with cancer. Damn, man. Wanted to understand what happens with my H-1B after September 24. So, it is entirely unclear whether you are out, out of the quota or not. So, if your employer has not revoked yet your H-1B, you could argue that it's still valid. And if they want to still get you back into the U.S., they can extend your H-1B now or a little bit later, but now would be better. If I have an unused H-1B, can I apply for B-1B too? Sure. Sure, if you, if you just want to visit... Uh, you could apply for B1B2, but the problem is government can choose to cancel your H1B visa because you haven't used it. So, should they be doing it? Ordinarily, they should be doing it. That's, I think, their SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Okay. Uh, star 5, if you have a follow-up question, press star 5. Okay. H1B concurrent filing. This is from Raj Reddy. 
एच वन बी कंकरंट फाइलिंग विद स्पाउस इज एल एल सी सो ही वॉन्ट्स टू वर्क फॉर इज वाइफ माई वाइफ इज ऑन एच फोर ए डी कैन आई अप्लाई फॉर अ कंकरंट एच वन बी विद माई वाइफ येस बट शी हैज टू पे यू वेदर शी हैज अ प्रोजेक्ट फॉर यू और नॉट नो यू कुड यू यू शुड बी एबल टू डू इट इवन एज अ डायरेक्ट एम्प्लॉयर ऑफकोर्स इट्स नाइस टू हैव एन एल एल सी एटसेट्रा um uh, and you can work from home i don't see any problem with that is it worth it in the case that i can't tell you that depends upon the numbers involved um i can't uh, rajesh ji i can't really tell you what is the best way to go there are so many options are you here press star 5 press star 5 yeah i it's just it's a it's not something i can decide um, or even recommend in a vacuum um the only thing i would recommend is whatever you do don't quit your present job until your wife's h1b is approved and be up front don't try to hide anything okay let's go on star 5 if anybody has a follow up question on this press star 5 all right let's go to uh, anand reddy currently on stem opt expiring in june employer is filing my h1 so my cap cap will be from june 11 to september 30th if there are layoffs how do i continue to stay what happens to me so uh your stem opt is expiring i guess you'll have to roll it over to um if that's what you're planning to do you can roll it over to uh, cpt go back to school within 60 days yep apply and be accepted to a new academic program yep is it safe to join day 1 cpt between june and august so june to july july to, yeah i think but well, it has to be 60 days right yeah 60 days if i get laid off in july month uh, i would start from the date your your opt is expiring yeah opt is expiring june 11th yeah so yeah that would be okay if i get laid off in july can i join day one cpt university whose intake is august 28 check with the school i think you should be able to join is it safe to day one cpt is it safe to day one cpt ever i think it is uh, as long as you are enhancing your career uh, and also getting work authorization why not press star 5 if you have a follow up question press star 5 okay oh that ends all the questions that are posted anyone who has any question press star 5 oh boy 11 follow up questions I'll go in the order that you guys logged in. Let me see how many I can do. Oh damn! I keep getting these pop-ups. Let's see. This one is Colorado. Colorado. Colorado, go ahead. I can hear you. Hi, Ajit. Uh, so I'm here once again. Mm-hmm. So I have a question on uh, L1A again. So if somebody is on L1A mm-hmm. and has already spent six years in the US and unfortunately did not uh, get through H1B lottery, mm-hmm. so in that case, if a person gets selected in the H1B lottery after spending uh, six years in US on L1A. Mm-hmm. Is he still applicable to no. qualify for H one? No. 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 They're not. No. Okay. He cannot even file it. No. Like if the H one is a what is the point? He goes back. It will be de- denied. Okay. 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 But if he has I one forty approved, like I one forty already filed, he, I he cannot. Don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I think then he might be able to. Uh, but is it a clear cut is there a policy statement somewhere that says you can no okay All okay right. okay thank you and one more question is uh, ma'am l2 uh, yeah you're going to have to really okay sorry yeah because i got a bunch yeah. of people waiting okay <laughs> yeah 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 no All i right. understand right. i understand right. bye bye okay thank you thank you so much yeah 
So guys, we gotta we gotta wrap this up quickly, okay? Because there is a bunch of people waiting. Now let's go to Tennessee. Uh, one second. Uh, Tennessee, go ahead, please. I can hear you. Tennessee. Yes. Hello, Rajiv sir. Uh, currently, I'm on L1 A visa, and uh, my assignment is going to uh, complete in a couple of months. So probably my current employer will send me back to India. Acha. But I used to have uh, an old H1 uh, back in 2021 that I only used for one year. Acha. So is it possible? Can I find another employer here? Who will be willing to hire me and transfer my visa? Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. Can I? Yeah. How many years of L1 did 20... you? How many years of L1 did you use? Uh, so this current L1 A visa, I was here only for six months. But in 2018, uh, I stayed on L1 B, which was specialized knowledge for two years. No, but so but hang on. Combine both two and a half. Hey, boy, sir, wait a second, wait a second. Just calm. Just yeah. answer my questions so I understand what what is going on. Which yes, year was your H1B approved? H1B was approved in 2010. 2010. 2010. 2010. Like 2010. 2010. Yeah. Okay. So, and you used that H1B only for one year. That's correct. Then in 2018, you used L1 for two years. Yes. Then you used um, L1 again for six months. Yeah. Now currently. So two and a half years plus one, three and a half years. You should have at least two and a half years of H one B still remaining. Okay. Okay. So you okay. can try converting. All right, and I I don't need to go to India or Canada to get the H one stamped. Because I don't think so. I can continue. As long years. as you apply while you are within your L one period, you should be able to get it mm -hmm. done here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Thanks. Good luck. Okay, next one is Texas. Yeah, Texas, go ahead, please. Texas. Hello, Rajiv sir. Hello, sir. So, yeah, can I can hear you. Sir, uh, good. Yeah, I got paid off uh, during September 2023. Okay. And during the 60-day grace period, I applied for B2 in November of 2023. And my B2 also brought up to during February of 2023. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, if you've been trying to look for a job and you weren't able to, at least it's worth asking for it. Why not? Okay. 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 Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's go to California. Uh, this is area code six six nine. California, go ahead, please. Hi, Rajuji. Hello, so, sir. This is again like for cab driver. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So for SUVT without receipt notice, so I checked like all of the top universities, including my university guidelines, mm -hmm. and they all say like you you will need uh, receipt notice in order to get cab cab. Mm -hmm. So does your advice to reach out to uh, service team or maybe? Like yeah, I would. I would still. Yeah. Case? Yeah, I would still want to know because when I looked at this issue last time, it was a, a few months back. It seemed to suggest, from what I remember, uh, and of course memory can be wrong. Um, from what I remember, it was that this system is automated. There is no paper required. That's what I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the issue is like they are very slow in updating the service portal. The service portal doesn't know like my H one B got selected, and that's the issue. Ah, uh, no, selected ka they won't know. But when your paperwork physically reaches the USCIS. And your data is entered by the USCIS. It should automatically update the portal, as far as I know. Okay. Okay. And uh, so my DS also told like you know it cannot be approved uh, uh, because like now time is late, so they cannot guarantee it will be approved. So <coughs> if any reason like my cap gap is not approved later, is Day One CPT still an option while my H one B petition is pending with USCIS? Well, day one CPT is only possible as a rollover. Of course, you can always get a change of status to F one. Uh, as a rollover, it is only possible if you do it either within the life of your OPT or within sixty days of expiration. Okay. Yeah. 
Sorry, um, I am a little lost here. Um, okay. I got a pop-up again. The darn thing just completely screwed up my desktop. Okay, so you got selected to the lottery, right? Yes. Your question is, how can I convince my employer to apply for an H-1B? Yes. Uh, so they said, like, uh, they will be applying, but I just want to ensure, if, will there be any issue... Uh, with the new extended uh, start date and uh, oh, can I so apply so. in change of status because now the start date is quarter 1, 2025 instead of like October 1 for H-1B. Okay, so from what I remember, the last word from the USCIS on this was, and you can double check that, you can choose to start your H-1B anytime within six months of October 1st. Okay. So within, for, okay. within six months of October 1st brings you to April 1st of next year. Okay. 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 That's how it works. Okay. And, and uh, I can uh, file for change of status in that case. So like, uh, I don't need to do consular processing. Yeah, if you are maintaining uh, status, if your OPT is still valid, then you should be able to show. Yeah. Okay. Good yes. luck. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Let's go to Cleveland, Texas. Texas, go ahead, please. I can hear you, Texas. 832. Uh, hi, Rajiv Ji. Hello. Thank you, firstly, for the amazing forum. Mm -hmm. Of course. And my question is regarding bringing my son from India on L1A visa. On, hang my on, son, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How, much, how old is he? He's 22 years. Sir. Ah, acha. Take it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. L1A. Go ahead. He's been working in our Indian company for past three years. Right. For more than two years serving as operations manager. All right. And our company is into software consulting. All right. And we also have a US company right. where I'm the only employee okay. serving as CEO and engaging into consulting here also. Presently, I have I-140 appeal pending right. and 485 also pending. Right. We are coming up with certain contracts in the next three months where right. we need to expand the team and right. hence we require an operations manager in the U.S. Right. So, uh, could you please advise me how to proceed well, with this? All and you can do... You start working from well, India. All you mm -hmm. can do is try because smaller companies typically have a much harder time getting an L1A approval. Okay. So, all you can do is try. Um, they can approve it or deny it. That's not within our control. Um, but it, is it worth yeah. trying? Well, maybe. Certainly worth trying. But the company is too small in the United States. Uh, it is difficult. How, yes, how many employees do you have in India? Uh, we have five, presently five people. Yeah, too small. I mean, it's very difficult for me to say this is a comfortable case for an L1A. It isn't. Okay. okay, sir. Can uh, he start working remotely from India? Yeah, that he can. As long as the um, the tech that he's working on is not export restricted, if it is just normal technology, mm -hmm. no problem. Absolutely. And will that help in the L1 because he's already working? I don't and think so. Our ability to pay is already I, 
I don't think so. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck, man. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Ohio area code five one three. One second. Ohio, go ahead, please. Uh, hello, Rajiji. Hello, sir. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm on OPT, and right. my employer is a cap exempt employer. So, okay. and there is for this year, a uh, lottery employer B has filed my H1 and it got selected. Okay. So, my question is, uh, how do like uh, employer A is willing to sponsor H1, which is a cap exempt, and employer B is willing, is has already filed, H, uh, has already mm -hmm. got the H1 selection. Mm -hmm. So, how, do, but the project is from next year, mm -hmm. so around like March. So, if I start H1 from, H1 processing with my employer, current employer A, who is mm -hmm. a non-cap exempt, mm -hmm. and it, do I go to do I need to go for stamping once if I get approval and can I parallelly submit the document? Mm, so I just mentioned right that you can apply for any date within six months of October first, from what I recall. So that is all the way to April first of next year. I don't see any issue. Okay. Okay. So on what H one do I be? Is it on my current employer or or? Sir, don't get into oh, all those details. I, I really don't have the time to address all those issues. All I can tell you is you can do it. All right? Okay. So don't worry about all that. Your lawyers can help you with all that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to um, get through the questions that have... Uh, I'm not doing repeat questions, guys. Put down your hand. I'm not going to come back to you. Sorry. I have to go on. There are still six people who have not uh, had their questions answered. I'll not be doing repeat questions. Uh, let's go to area code. Uh, this is California. California, go ahead, please. Yes, I'm um, calling on the behalf of someone. Um, mm -hmm. Here's the scenario. We mm -hmm. have a H-1B holder working in the U.S. Okay. Their spouse is in India, and they have applied for an H-4. Okay. Um, it seems to be taking some time. It's been over 15 months, and every time we ask for a status update, they say it's under processing. Mm. So, uh, my question here is, um, would it make sense uh, to apply again, and would there be any consequences to doing that, or is there a better path forward? Yeah, I think the easiest thing would be to just have a congressman look into it, because it doesn't make any sense for this to be uh, languishing so much. Okay. So... What I would suggest okay. is to contact the local congressman, whether it's a senator or a House of Representative member, um, federal level, um, and just have them, just ask them, please, can you look into this? They're able to get you a response within three to five days usually. Okay. Let's figure out what's going on. Okay. And, got it. And applying again, is there any... Uh, no, there's no point in applying, applying again. again. No, I don't see any point in applying again. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. Uh, that was California. Now, let's go to Rhode Island. Hold on one second. Is this Rhode Island? Yes, it is Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island, go ahead. I can hear you. Uh, good afternoon, Rajivji. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is, like, I husband H-1B was filed by, let, let's say, company A, mm -hmm. along with my H-4, mm -hmm. was filed. Uh, while the petition was under process, uh, he got an offer from company B and accepted the offer. Mm -hmm. So the company B is again, like, filed, uh, like, H-1B and both H-4. Ma'am, one second. Ma'am, ma one second. So your husband is not subject to the lottery. He's doing an H-1B transfer, right? Transfer, yes. Achha, okay. So, company A applied, then company B applied. All right, keep going. Yes. Yeah. So, company B's petition, both H1 and H4 got approved, okay. and it is valid till 2027. All right. Okay. So, now company A withdraws his, like my husband, H1B okay. uh, petition, withdraws from USIC. Okay. After that, after a few, like, like a month, mm -hmm. I received a letter from USICS. Mentioning that that your uh, 
I-539 application was denied as uh, their record shows that uh, you know, the, your spouse uh, principal worker form was withdrawn by a company. Mm -hmm. So in the letter, it, yeah, it is mentioned like since I that your application is denied, so your stay in the United States more than 180 days will be considered as unlawful presence. Right. Now my question is that, uh, I already have a, like a, you know, approved petition till 2020. Yeah, what, what you need to, to ma'am, what you need to do is open a service request and make sure that your records are corrected. I don't think you have a problem. I can't see an issue because you already have an approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so open a service to, request. You know, tell me, mention then, update them that, hey, my, like, update my current petition thing. Yeah, I think you need to open a service request. Okay. Okay. Good okay. luck. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, let's go to Florida. Florida, I can hear you. Area code three eight six. Florida. Hello, Rajiv. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Um. I I have a two question actually. One of them is a follow up question on the CAP exam, okay. and one of them is you. Am I allowed to ask two? If not, I can yeah, yeah. If, if you can make it quick, yeah, we'll be able because I have another um, yes, in sir. about five minutes. I've got to go, so keep going. I'll be quick. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm working uh, right now. I'm on OPT and uh, working for a leading airline and okay. as an analyst. Okay. Um, my company filed for H one B. Didn't pick up for last three years and. Uh, uh, I got in touch with one of the uncapped exempt company or a build fellowship, they call it. And okay. they said my company can go through that route okay. and I can still work for co-current H1B, they call it, and I can work for profitable H1B right. as well as non-profit for five hours. That is, that, is, that, is, that is possible, yes. We have dealt with this situation in our frequently asked questions. You can just review them on immigration.com. What else? Yes, and the last question is that um, my F1 visa was expired in 2019, September. Uh -huh. And that time I was on an initial OPT with my okay. bachelor degree. Okay. And it got over in 2022. And okay. I got entered in my master's. Okay. And I right now I'm on the first year OPT with my master's degree. And I need to renew my visa. Okay. Um, do you uh, think it's a good idea to go to Canada? No, I would, I, would, I, would, that? I would wait till H1B. Just do my H1B instead. I Thank right. you. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, last two questions. One is from New Jersey. New Jersey, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Hi, Rajiv Ji. Thank Hello, you sir. so much for uh, mm -hmm. doing this. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it quick. Uh, so, uh, I was uh, laid off um, earlier this year in February and I exhausted 60 days okay. uh, of my H-1B grace okay. period. Uh, I okay. do have a, a confirmed I-140 from the very first company and the priority date is 2016. Uh, so that being said, I filed the COS to B1B2 okay. and my plan is to kind of, uh, you know, continue to look for the job. And in the meantime, I'm, I'll be traveling around the U.S. But here's the other caveat. I'm also developing uh, an app, and I wanted to launch that app in the U.S. without violating any of the, um, you know, immigration laws. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of wondering what would be the best path. Uh, can I open the LLC, and if I can, and then say launch the app on the App Store? Uh, I believe I cannot promote actively, right? So that, what would be the way to, um, you know, do that? This is a long discussion. Uh, most Thanks. of this has been covered on our frequently asked questions. Um, you are currently on first year OPT? No, no, no. Uh, I already, uh, uh, I was on H1B. Okay. I have priority okay. date of got, 2016. Got so, so on H1B, right now, on H1B, on, H1B, on H1B, H1B sir, yeah. sir, on H1B, there is no way to do any kind of, uh, well, it's very, very unlikely that you can easily do an entrepreneurial role for your own company. If you get hired by a company to whom you license your mm -hmm. technology um, or license your app, and you are a minority stockholder in the company, um, and they do your H-1B, mm -hmm. that might be possible. But can you be an entrepreneur 
a majority stock holder of your own company it's dangerous okay many reasons for that but there are yeah. regulations right now pending yeah, yeah, sir let me finish there are regulations mm-hmm. right now pending that mm-hmm. could change that situation okay right go ahead right now i'm on b1 b2 uh, honestly because, yeah to uh, wo to bilkul like usme to yeah, you can't do anything on b1 b2 at all no bis- no uh, employment But what if yeah Sure. I mean, I don't want to use my name. That that's what I'm getting. Well, at. but like, you're. I can start so, an so LL, look, can I start an LLC? Look, look, if you. Okay. If you hide behind another name, that only makes it far worse because then it becomes fraud in addition to immigration violation. Okay. So what you're asking me is even worse than just breaking the law and breaking immigration rules. If you get into the fraud category. you could be barred from entering usa forever so be careful with that yeah <laughs> okay uh sorry if uh, if i gave that intention my 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 question was more on the line of i want to launch the app but right. it's okay if i'm i if i if it doesn't uses my name or my ssn or whatever like if if there's a viable path like using someone from india well, like I, my dad is in I, india i don't so know, i don't know i don't know what the apps require i have no idea how the apps uh, or what the um, okay. um, you know the app platform wants you to put in there no clue that's not an immigration question that is more a question of how to post the app okay uh, but if you are getting money out of it and it's your app and you're just you know kind of putting up a facade i i would avoid that if i were you all right let me move on to my last question sir okay good luck great okay Yeah, this is always tricky. Last question is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, go ahead, please. Hi, Rajiv. Okay, this question is uh, for my friend. Uh, mm-hmm. She works as a copywriter for an advertising agency. Mm-hmm. Um, she has an H one B right now, uh, and her extension is up for uh, this October. Uh, but currently, I mean, her company changed her job description to. Uh, the position not needing a bachelor's degree uh to do the job so will that be a tricky situation during the extension or yeah she should not she should not be in the us if her job description has been dropped to something other than the h1b for which it was processed because any substantial change in the job requires some kind of an amendment and if the job doesn't require a bachelor's degree it can't be amended she should be leaving the united states Okay. Okay. And do you have like any? There are any options for this? Is it? Is there way around for this? No, one? just look for another job. I mean, that's the only option I can think of. Got it. And is will like promoting to a senior position will help her case? No, not? she. That's once you break status, you need to reinstate yourself one way or the other. So that's a relatively long topic. Okay. How to do it? discuss it with their lawyers okay uh, it may not be needed it may be okay. needed but it's a very fact bound question there's no general answer okay got it okay good. thank you so much good luck sir all right folks um, that's the best we can do today and i'll see you again next thursday on linkedin good to be with you all take care bye bye